Hello, everybody. Well, today has been a very unsuccessful day of making anything happen. <laughs> but, nonetheless, we got things done. So, we got done what we need done, even though it wasn't very much stuff. All right, so uh, I got a little something here on the table. I'm going to film it from the live feed view because this is usually how I do the live feeds. Uh, I got a Tilton carburetor right here off of a 385 that we're going to put a kit in it because I got something to put it on over yonder and I want to play with it. We're not going to put it on today. We're just going to build it. Uh, I've got some other stuff coming and You'll see it as we go on down the road. Uh, it's uh, something I've been working on. So uh, if you want to check out our apparel store or our Facebook group, I put a link down in the description below so you can go check that stuff out. So without further ado, I'm going to make this video right quick. We're going to try to tear in this carburetor. I'm going to try to show it as best as possible of how I clean these things and put them back together. So, hope you enjoy this. You won't be able to see me during this video because I'm going to do it like this right here. Whoop. And hopefully, you can see it pretty good. I think you can. I'm going to try to keep my fingers out of the way. And yes, if you're wondering... The screws do appear to be loose. No, I have not taken it apart. I just cracked all the screws loose. So I didn't have to uh, try to crack them loose on the video. And I got our kit laid out here. Uh, we may not use all of it. I usually don't change these welch plugs unless... Uh, Unless they seem to be something wrong with them. So. I just give her some little light love taps and try to try to pop her off there. Oh, and it looks like it's clean. This carburetor might not even need a kit in it. Uh, I just know I want to put it on something and I want it to run and I don't want it to give me no trouble, hopefully. So I figured I would just put a kit in it from the start. And I did buy an OEM Tillotson kit, not a aftermarket kit. Because I just, well, I just went ahead and spent a little bit of extra money. This might or might not be one of my saws for racing next year. I'm trying to save this gasket because I got another carburetor that might need a rebuild on it too and everything that ain't bad on this one I might use on the other one. So I'm trying to save it. And plus if you can get it off without tearing it up very much, you don't have to clean so much off the thing. I did tear a little bit of it off right there. We'll just go ahead and scrape it clean. I'm just, just scraping it clean. I got a little brake clamp. I'm just going to spray it off. Hit it with air hose. it up here. I'm going to lay that stuff to the side as I do it. I know. It ain't that much fun watching the uh, old fella screw the screws out and drop the screwdriver. But Everything else has been a wash today, so maybe this will go okay.
Yeah, this carburetor would have been just fine. I could have put this right on and it'd probably not give a minute's trouble. But, sure as I did, then it would have. Should have, could have, would have. We're just going to go ahead and do it. We're just going to go ahead and do it. We're going to do it to it. It looks pretty clean on the inside. I'm going to scrape. Scrape this little bit of gasket off that was stuck on here. This looks like somebody's done this before. This probably had a kit or three in it since it was made. We're just going to scrape her clean. So we got the best chance at it sealing back up or anything. I'm going to rinse it off. We're going to change the needle in it too, so. Yeah, I know y'all seen that. My little screen blowed away. All right. Now, I have not been in here, so. We're going to. We're going to take all this stuff off. I'm going to use the tweezers today and maybe that will help. Maybe that will assist in y'all being able to see it. And of course it's the wrong needle. Why is it the wrong needle? I have no earthly idea. I ordered this kit specifically for this saw. And this is the needle they sent. The long one. So apparently it looks like we'll be putting the short one back in it. Don't ask me. I don't know. It's one of them days. <laughs> one of them days. That screen's clean, so I'm probably just going to go with the screen that's in it. Oh, okay. I'm going to go ahead and reuse the old needle, I guess, since the new one's wrong. I shot the spring across the room. We're going to put the new... Uh, Meter and lever in there. And push that to one side. Set the. We'll set that spring up in there. And maybe y'all can see it this time. I'm just going to set this down right there. Push it down. Y'all can see it's down, and I take and push. Well, when it's all down, I usually put my finger directly there in the center, and then I push this under the screw and then hold it down like that. Then tighten the screw back up. And that is way too high. So I'm going to hold back here at the very back and I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to push this down and then tip it a little bit. I'm going to stick that under there and just, I'm going to try to get this meter and lever flush across here. I want it to be flush. I want to have pressure on the on the needle, which it looks like it is. I'm still dropping everything. I 
I blowed through the jets, so we're gonna try it like that. What I always do is the simplest and the most basic on these things first. And you gotta hook that little tab up under there. I've had people ask me why I didn't change the welch plugs and all that. Well, here's the reason. If they're good, you best off just leave them alone. Because you might not make them better if you take them out. So, anytime you're doing a carburetor kit, just leave the Welsh plugs alone if they look good and they don't seem to be leaking. Do your kit, put it on there and try it. If it runs good, go with it. If you have tunability issues, then just go back in and change the Welch plugs. And check your needle height and all that stuff. After you do it a while, you get kind of used to it. So, that's why we make these videos. Like, if you can't get it to tune on the bottom, if you rev it up, and then it sits there for a minute and starts getting richer and richer and dies out, and you run your low screw in all the way, and you have no throttle response, then you've probably got a leaking plug or a leaking needle. And it's getting fuel on the low side where it's not supposed to be. Uh, if you have a lean condition when you rev it up, that's usually the needle's too low or the screen stopped up. And some mic carbs have an issue on the inside that I just cannot figure out. See, there's a screen right here. There it is. I'll go ahead and put the new one in it so y'all can see it. I'm just going to take that new one and put it right there on top. I'm going to take this piece of fuel line and push it down in there like that. Because that is one of the most aggravating things they are to get in there. But we'll go ahead and change it. The carburetor looks nice and clean, so I'm not going to worry with it a whole lot. And we'll figure this out. That is wrong. That is right. You can tell which way is which when you look at it, because you'll, you'll have this hole right here. And this hole here and that hole there have to line up. So they will line up these two nubs on the bottom of your of your outer cover. And that pretty much is what I do whenever I rebuild one of these to start with. Because I tell you, I've had trouble getting Welsh plugs not to leak after after changing them. So, if I don't have to change them, then I don't. I can't get my screwdriver to lock in there. This will, hopefully this will take care of this carburetor and it'll make a nice carburetor. I've got a carburetor on the saw now. It's got a WJ on it. And that WJ is a little bit goofy. I'm hoping this will work that out. I know it looks like I'm really tightening the wheels out of them, but I'm not. It's just hard to get this screwdriver to stay in here. But I get that in there. I'm going to take my oil bottle if I can find it. Good old three in one sewing machine oil. And I'm just going to put a, I'm going to put a little dab around that. Put a little dab around here. A 
a lot of times I don't show this, but I, I like to put a little dab of, of lubricant around the shafts. I like to put a little bit on the screw and a little bit on these screws. If you wash it real good, you wash all the oil off of it and this will, you can see a little flash rust on there. This will stop some of that from, from rusting so bad. So after you do that, just check everything, make sure it all works. That all seems to work good. The screws do turn because I checked on them. So there is a Tilson with a few new parts installed. We're going to throw the old parts back in this bag along with some of these other pieces because, well, if you've ever done a bunch of carburetor work, you can't always find this stuff. So we'll keep that for the next one. Cause like I said, I've got another carburetor coming that may need a kit in it or it may not. So I'm going to save on that cause that diaphragm and pump both feel good. So all right, well we'll be uh we'll be trying this saw out one day. Y'all get to see it run. Oh uh, still working on a few other things, but it does run now, but you, you can't see it just yet. All right. I got to go in here and look after some youngins. Mama just left to go to the barn. Uh and like I say, it's way later in the day than it normally is for me because I have had to run and do all kinds of stuff today. So, there it is. Rebuilding the carburetor, they're all about the same on the inside. There's a few differences here and there, but primarily it's about the same. All right. Well, I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all have a good day. Stay safe. Be kind. Treat each other the way you want to be treated. God bless. Bell hopper out.